Welcome everyone. We are Team Sparkle Motion because we are all about that commitment. And if you've seen uh, Donnie Darko, you'll know the reference. Uh, all right, so I'm going to present here, but we're going to go back and forth a little bit uh, speaking. So uh, first off, I'm going to pass it off to my teammate, Aaron. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Glad you all can make it. Uh, one of our team members, Xiao, was unable to be here today, but I'll start with introductions for myself. Uh, my name is Aaron Saccarato, graduated from Denison University in 2018 with a communications degree, was also a part of the varsity swim team at Denison, where I was able to bring in two out of the program's total five national championships, which was a cool experience. After college, had work experience in the sales environment, uh, realized that was not something similar to Tim that I wanted to pursue long term. And I always had an interest in coding. However, the timing with uh, my life and professional career was never in line. And I had never really spent additional time outside of work investing in that hobby or interest as well. Um, the timing was right when I found the opportunity with Dev10. And I'm extremely grateful as a career changer to have a program like this that can put me on the right path and continue me along with a uh, wonderful career. So I'll, I'll give that to Thomas. All right, so um, I graduated uh, college in 2017 from the University of Chicago with a degree in history. Uh, so definitely coming from a non-technical background. When I graduated college, I actually didn't even own a laptop, uh, but I did get one a cheap old laptop and started uh, tinkering with it first with uh, Linux and uh, kind of distro hopping and, and playing around with it there. Uh, you might say my first programming language was Bash, um, but I just fell in love with the hobby uh, and started playing around with um, all sorts of different uh, programming languages. And it was something that uh, really was a hobby interest at first, but um, developed into uh, something that I really recognized as a passion over time. Um, and something that I kept returning to. So eventually that uh, gave me the kind of uh, confidence and motivation to uh, move in the direction of becoming a developer. First, I sought out a role in IT um, to get some baseline experience in understanding the uh, infrastructure that software runs on from operating systems and networks, um, virtual machines, these sorts of things. And uh, then I found Dev10. So really excited to be here. Great. So we'll start with a little bit of background and inspiration behind the idea. Um, it came as a combination between the love for poker and our hunger for nostalgia in that 8-bit theme. Think Galaga at the old pizza shop arcade. So with that said, we combined the fundamental rules of poker with a very easy to understand uh, user interface that has a very retro feel to it. We believe that it's a great balance between the familiar concepts that we've learned throughout training and, and these last three months, combined with some new learning that really pushed us outside of our comfort zones, forced us to come together as a team to create um, an application that sort of elevated our prior learnings. Next slide, please. Great, so I'll talk a little bit about the project planning, which in my opinion, I think really allowed us to have a very smooth development process. So for our uh, minimum viable project, we have an account registration feature. Um, we have the ability to fund a virtual wallet in order to bet that virtual currency in a game. Admin users have the ability to create and remove rooms um, within the game lobby. That is a feature that if you are a normal user will be hidden from you. In the game lobby, it lists games by ID, it has the number of seats available, as well as the stakes for each game. Um, so if you're a high roller, maybe you want to go into one of those larger stake rooms. It has two-player gameplay as well, which was a very exciting feature to implement. Um, there were some time or considerations that we had to discuss prior to starting, one being time constraints. Learning WebSocket to get that two-player capability did take a lot of time before we even could start coding. And of course, with a new concept, there's always hiccups 
and obstacles along the way that we had to debug and not allow us to throw us off on our process. Um, similar to that point, some of the learning goals as well really just force us to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone and create a game plan with the team um, so that we could come together and achieve everything we needed to in order to have a finished product for today. All right, so I'll touch a little bit on the uh, technologies that we chose. Uh, as Aaron mentioned, uh, our learning goal was WebSockets. So WebSockets is an alternative protocol to HTTP. Um, so ordinary REST HTTP um, style communication on the internet is uh, uh, it's a request response model. So a client makes a request and gets a response and the connection is closed. Um, with WebSockets, it's different. Uh, underlying uh, WebSockets, the initial request is an HTTP request, but once the uh, connection is established, it gets upgraded to a WebSocket connection, which maintains an open channel of communication between the server and the client. And what that allows is it allows the client to send uh, messages to the, uh, the server to send messages to the client without the client having to uh, first make a request and pull the server. So this uh, enables real-time applications like chat applications and games um, where you don't want to have to be uh, constantly asking the server, hey, are there any updates? Are there any updates? Rather, when there are uh, updates or events, you just want the server to push those to you immediately. Um, for our visual design, we found a really great uh, Nintendo, old school Nintendo style uh, CSS framework to work with. Um, and then uh, this wasn't really uh, part of our learning goal, but it, in order to address some of the time constraints, uh, we found some a couple of external APIs to uh, mainly help with uh, just um, uh, uh, shuffling the deck. We found a deck API. Uh, that would kind of maintain the state of a deck and uh, shuffle and deal cards, uh, and then uh, also handle the hand raking um, uh, uh, and the determination of the winner once once we were done. So uh, to help with our kind of like tight kind of time constraints, we decided to use those APIs, um, and then we developed all of the game flow uh, itself. Now, um, that involved learning uh, a bit about Spring Web Client as well, uh, because we added a, a service in our back end to communicate with those APIs. Um, so that was an interesting additional uh, topic that we you know, didn't really uh, anticipate going in. Um, otherwise, we use a uh, typical relational database on the back end, uh, SQL, MySQL, and uh, React on the front end. All right, so with that, I will Go ahead and start the demo. Uh, all right. So uh, I I got two screens up here because it's a two player game. So I'd like to you know show you both sides. Um. All right. So eight bit poker showdown. Welcome. Let's go ahead and uh, sign up for an account. Uh. All right. I've used this name before, but I deleted him. So David. At Castle off. Okay, and that takes us to the login page. And Okay, so once you're logged in, uh, it'll bring you to the lobby uh, where you can see we have uh, rooms with different stakes. So the stake represents uh, the big blind if you're uh, familiar with poker. So there's a small blind and a big blind. It's kind of like an ante if you know what an ante is. Uh, the small blind is just half of the big blind. So if the big blind is four, the small blind is gonna be two. Um, for our minimum viable project, uh, we made all of this uh, rooms have just two seats. Um, but we uh, did add, um, well, we anticipate in the future adding uh, more, more players. 
uh, more more seats. Uh, okay, so we also have a player uh, profile where you can add a display name. I'm going to give David Hanselhoff the Hoff, and uh, you can fund your balance. So let's give him five hundred dollars. Okay, so now let's get a second player going here. Oh, whoops. Okay. All right, so I just have a, a user ready to go there. All right, let's uh, let's play the game. Okay, so uh, when you first log into the game, uh, you can see uh, both players here. And, uh, oh, I forgot to give, uh, you know what, let's give our other player a profile name. Okay, yeah, that'll be great. Okay, great. So now you can see both of their display names. Uh, let's go ahead and, oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. Got a little bug there. Let's see. Huh. Well, something always goes wrong on Demo Day, right? Uh, <laughs> all right. Let me uh, just try refreshing the page here. Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, shoot. Uh, okay, sorry guys, I don't know what went wrong there, but um, let me just try, I'm just gonna reset the, start from the top here. My apologies. Uh, as you can see, uh, some of this is still working out the kinks here. So let's let's add our user again, but um okay 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 fair now uh let's give them some nicknames again here and count balance um yeah okay cool let's try that again and see shoot you know what we must have made let me try re rebooting our server here Give it a minute here. There we go. OK, so we just need to reboot the server. Um, I don't know what happened there, but uh, pretend that never happened. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start the game. Uh, oh, is our server going? All right, I guess everything that can go wrong will go wrong on game day. I think uh, what just happened there was that because we rebooted the server, uh, we lost our connection with the guys. So, uh, but you should still have the account. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um. Shoot, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Let's see, maybe I need to restore. Okay. Let me try signing in with a different user, maybe. Um, no, Nancy doesn't exist. Uh, let's just start fresh with a fresh account here. OK. Uh, Tom at demo.com. Okay. 
Okay. First page here. Okay, maybe um, while I try and figure this out, we could uh, move on to challenges and then return to the demo here. Uh, I did test it this morning and had it working, but um, yeah, sorry guys, that's that's embarrassing. But yeah, uh, Aaron, do you want to hear uh, maybe talk about the challenges here? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and figure out what's going on for a minute. Sure. Yeah. No worries. Aaron, do, you, do, you have, do you have the presentation up on your screen? Did you want to share your screen in the meantime? Yes, one second. Perfect. So this was not on our challenges slide, but we could add demo bugs to that list. However, we will persevere one way or another. So let me just share my screen. Great, wonderful, grand. Okay, awesome. So for the development process on the back end, I myself started with the schema and database layer. Um, it was built using MySQL, something I had a little bit of experience prior to Dev 10, but I was glad that the concept and language uh, was present in the curriculum again. Uh, Xiao had worked on the domain layer um, and the controllers within our Java Maven project, um, while Thomas established the WebSocket connection and security function, as well as the game service, which was a very um, demanding process and also very important towards our app. Like Thomas mentioned, there were poker APIs that dealt with the card shuffling and card hand ranking. However, we needed to uh, code the logic for the game in terms of turn taking, what happens for a bet, raise, call, etc. Xiao and myself also led test development for the service and repository layer, which was a fun collaborative process because we allowed and supplemented Thomas to continue to code and work through the service as we test tested the methods in real time. Um, so I'll pass that to Xiao uh, to speak about some of the front end process. Yeah, so on front end, Aaron created the landing page. We you guys have seen is very cool. And he also made a very cool 404 page. Oh, is Aaron not here? Uh, sorry, um, I don't have the thing, so. Hi, Britt. Okay, um, Thomas, did you have the slides up that you could share real quick? You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Can you go back to the, the, yes. Okay, here, let me start over. So Aaron worked on the landing page, which everyone has seen. It's very, very cool. There's also a 404 page, which you guys will see later. <laughs> And I also created the forms and lobbies, which you've also taken a glimpse of when Thomas was logging in and signing up. And Thomas also did the front end security, which while you can't really see at the moment, it's there and is working. And he also led the game board creation, which you've taken a glimpse of. Um, you might also know that as the card table, game table, or the gambling table. And Overall, the whole team found front end to be slightly more challenging compared to that of back end. So there was a lot of more collaborative work and we also did a lot of more programming, pair programming together. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thomas, you're muted. Um, Sorry. Uh, okay. 
So uh, yeah, I can talk about the demo dev challenges. Um, I don't have the demo working yet. I'll have to um, do a little bit more looking at that. Uh, but so in terms of challenges, um, I would say uh, the biggest one that I would like to touch on, which maybe you're, uh, maybe this is related to what's going on today. Um, we uh, ran into issues with the game initialization or bootstrapping phase. Um, so initially, um, I, I believe that what, so there's, there's several steps that have to happen in order to get the game off the ground and get the game going. Um, initially the way that we were approaching this was, uh, somewhat kind of analogous to how you would do it using, um, HTTP where the client may uh, chain together several promises, for example, to get the right order of events to occur. Um, in a WebSocket uh, model, um, that's kind of the wrong way of thinking about it. Uh, so after really struggling with that for a while, uh, we addressed it through creating uh, an event listener on the back end because with uh, WebSockets, it's event driven. So um rather than uh having the client um uh create kind of like a chain of of um requests that uh it you know waits for the response in order to uh take a certain action um rather uh you have the client subscribe to a, a channel um, which is managed by a message broker on the back end. And the message broker fires messages to all the subscribers of the channel um, based on certain events. So uh, when the game begins, what uh, should happen is that uh, the um, uh, on subscribing to the game, all members of the room should receive a uh, uh, should receive a message from the message broker when the uh, new players subscribe. So that was a uh, a major challenge that we dealt with um, and only kind of solved recently. I think um, perhaps that's uh, what our issues are are dealing with today. Um, another issue that we came up with um, was uh, dealing with some of the uh, JSON conversion from JSON to Java and back to, to JSON again. So typically Spring uh, kind of handles that um, for you, the Spring framework. Um, but we had some uh, cases where either Spring um, was having trouble uh, or it didn't quite match our, our use case. So like an example was with our player object, uh, we we're using players both for um uh tracking certain aspects of their game state like their account balance but also for authentication and when we return the player from the client to the server we didn't want to include any sensitive uh, security information so we uh, learned a bit about the library that um spring uses for json uh deserialization and serialization jackson um and ended up writing our own um object mapper to handle that uh, issue with the players. So those were some of the challenges that we faced, um, including uh, apparently everything breaking mysteriously on demo day. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, Thomas? Yes. How about we just show them the other pages that are working? Let's say like the 404 and okay. the four yeah. updating rooms and stuff. Yeah, that, that works. Um, where was I? Oh, you know, I, I closed my, uh, okay. Let me open up a new. Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe we've shown them kind of everything except for the 404. Um, let's just go ahead and show them the 404 page. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I apologize, guys. Um, I could try and debug it a little bit here and get it working uh, if you guys want. But otherwise, you know, it's fine. We can move on. So, Thomas, we didn't see the 404 page. We're just seeing your Q&A slide. Oh, uh, sorry. I need to. Okay. 
share the actual screen here. There we go. Okay. Awesome. I can confirm this was working yesterday. So uh, not to worry, Murphy's Law, you know, if something can go wrong, it usually does at the most inopportune moment. So that's okay. Um, but let's take some questions from the audience. Um, Corbin's got a question for you. Which yeah. server side WebSocket library did you use? Uh, so Spring, um, uh, we use Stomp. Spring gives you uh, uh, the Spring WebSocket um, uh, framework. Like if you install Spring WebSockets, it gives you Stomp. Yeah. Awesome. Do we have other questions from the audience? I do have a question for you. What was your favorite part of working on this application or what do you feel like you learned the most uh, when building this project? So I would say my favorite part was, um, unfortunately you can't see it now, but once we actually got the game going and the gameplay, uh, like that just felt really awesome. Um, so like just that, that achievement felt really good. Um, but in terms of learning, I think uh, having to kind of like use a different mental model to understand the web sockets was a big learning um, experience for me because, uh, yeah, like I said, I was kind of banging my head up against the wall for uh, a good day there where I was trying to think of WebSockets through the same kind of like model um, that I was familiar with, with, with Fetch and, and HTTP. Um, and it was causing all sorts of like weird issues where it would be inconsistent essentially. Uh, and, um, and then, having to like rethink my mental model and it finally clicking. I think that was a uh, major learning experience for me. Awesome. Scott asks, love the retro game look. Was uh, What was the styling technology? Uh, yeah, we used, uh, we can actually show it to you here. Um, it's called NES style CSS framework. If anyone ever wants to use it super fun here. And it's kind of like bootstrap, but for NES styles. That's really cool. Um, Joe says, I love the concept for this application, really fun. Can you talk a little bit about how planning influenced the final product? And if you could start over or, and uh, sorry, if you could start over, would you spend more time, less time or about the same time planning? Um, so all in all, I think we had about 10 days for this project and we spent, uh, the entire first day planning. Um, I think, uh, our plan was very extensive. Um, however, we, in that amount of time, like one day, um, I would say we had a pretty good plan for the back end. Um, and uh, we could have used a, a more thorough uh, plan for the front end, um, but that also would have been difficult um, just because we didn't quite know how the WebSockets was all going to fit together. So if I had more time, uh, I think what I would have done is front load a little bit more of the WebSocket learning. You know, so if we had an extra day or two, I, I probably would have, um, you know, just dedicated the entire uh, first day or even two days just to learning WebSockets um, and anticipating kind of uh, what that is going to look like uh, between the front end and the back end and how that communication is going to fit together. Um, so, yeah, I think that that was the, the main thing is that we, um, when we first started not knowing as much about WebSockets, our plan sort of structured the project on the um, model of a typical REST HTTP, HTTP application. Um, and I think if we had maybe spent a little bit more time upfront, um, 
digging into the WebSockets uh, documentation and building um, demo apps, we may have anticipated uh, some of the issues that we ran into there.